Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to another episode of the e-commerce marketing show. I'm Dave. And today I have with me Ben from West and Willow. Hey, Ben, thanks for coming on. I appreciate you being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Okay. So if you're listening to the show and you don't know who West and Willow, uh, what, what you all do, can you, can you give us a quick overview? Sure. West and Willow is a pet portrait business. We take our customers' pet photos and we turn them into a modern pet portrait. How long have you been doing this? Started in October of 2019. So almost okay. coming how, up on a year. How, how does, um, well, so there's so many things I want to, I think you have a super interesting story, but um, what, like, so when you, like, how did you even get into this world? You were doing social yeah. before this and you're yeah. like, screw it, I want to launch a brand? No, actually. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a really fascinating story even to myself when I think about it because I'm so entrenched in it now that the, the journey of how I got here is, is just interesting. I worked in advertising for 10 years in New York City. I worked like agency? primarily like agency. So RGA was, was, is probably the most well-known agency that I worked for. And I, I worked primarily on L'Oreal Cosmetics and Johnson & Johnson. Those are my two accounts. And I was started as a social strategist. I mean, in fact, even before RGA, I was at Club Monaco, which is a Ralph Lauren company. I was their community manager. So I always have been doing social. I've always been, you know, in branding, advertising. But really, my bread and butter was social ads, creative, brand voice. You know, fielding questions from clients about like how to get the blue check. You know, like that was my life. And <clears throat> so I, I, I just have a question on that on, on the because I, I think your background is fascinating on the. On the creative side, were you like, it, did you have, do you have a skill as a create creative or like you, you know how to, you've worked on enough accounts, you know how to find a designer who can get the aesthetic that you want? Kind of both. I've always been like, teach myself something to, if I didn't know how to do it and probably wrong, wrongly so. And, and after my career at agencies, I started to work for myself and take clients on myself for the, that was what I was doing for four years before West and Willow. And I would just, I would just say, yes, like, I was like, yep, I can do a re website redesign, of course. And I just learned and did it. And I, I taught myself Photoshop in, in high school. So that skill had been something that I, I knew. And I just have this, I guess, the, you know, the design sense enough to be able and the intuition to be able to do it myself. But I kind of bootstrapped myself, my whole career, whether it was an agency or working for myself, and now the same for Wes and Willow, of course. Okay, so how did you how did you make the how did you make the jump? I think I, cut, yeah, I, think so, I cut you off. But how so, did you make the jump over here? So, like I said, I, I was working in consulting. It were, or like trying to start my own agency. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I know I didn't want to work for somebody. And so I was starting to take these clients on for myself. And a lot of these clients that I had taken on for myself came through, you know, working in the agency world for so long. And well, not really that long, I mean, relatively to my career and just having the connections enough to, to start to take them on. But I was like, it still felt like I was like, I, I want to do I, I, like, it, it was good. I was comfortable and whatever, but like, I, I was like, what's next? So I went on YouTube. And I think the search query that I put into YouTube was how to get more social media clients and little, you know, maybe you do know, but there's a lot of gurus who tell you what to do. And one of the, one of the tips is to get a Facebook pixel thing for Chrome extension. And you can go and see if people have a Facebook pixel. And that's like your kind of cold call intro to that prospective client and say like, Hey, did you know you don't have a Facebook pixel install and you're missing out on all, blah, blah, blah. Right. So I was like, yeah, that's cool. What a good, that's a unique idea. And I think I reached out to 50 people on LinkedIn. I got zero, zero percent um, response rate. And, but what that, what I did get from that uh, was zero value in my marketing business, but that video led me to print on demand, which I had no idea existed. And I, when I became, say I became obsessed, I mean, like I was up until four in the morning watching videos on print on demand and I was like, and drop shipping and just like this whole like e-commerce direct to consumer kind of revolution that's been going on and how easy it is to start, you know, hard to succeed, but like easy it is to start with very, very little money. And that is truly how I came into this. I'm a dog owner myself, pet lover my whole life you know, and 
right and west and willow today exists to to create a deeper connection between pet and pet owner that is like our mission and so and and west was born you know from that from seeing like what was going on in the marketplace we're not the first pet portrait business out there you can do a search and you'll find a bunch of my competitors what what i saw as an opportunity was there were very few pet portrait brands that were using that were that were becoming a brand right and that were focusing on branding versus making a quick buck and that's that's just like i was like i think i think i can do this differently and i think i can do it successfully if i just treat this like a real business versus like i'm going to make some money doing print on demand i love that because like it's like you had this advantage as a, as a marketer as a brand person like because I, I think a lot of people see competition in a market and they're like oh I'm up until 4 a.m. researching print on demand businesses, but there's already 10 of these companies. I'm not going to start one. Right. It's almost like you said, Hey, there might be 10 of these companies, but they all kind of do a shitty job. I think if I can build a better brand, we can compete. Yeah. How did, how did your, how did your like skills as a marketer? Cause a lot of people that we talk to are not, Hey, I'm an entrepreneur just like you, but they came from like a finance background or a, you know, uh, just a completely different career change for you. How did your background as a marketer actually help? Like what, what tactically did you do from the beginning to like, you know, embed marketing in, in this business? Cause that, that is your, that is your advantage as an, as a, as a business owner. Yeah. So the, the number one thing that I did consciously was pick a name for the brand that was not like a innuendo for uh, dogs, right? Like paw prints or, um, you know, I don't want to like actually like put competitors on blast, but like they all yeah. basically, they all do it. Right. Um, and I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make this brand sound like just like a cool modern brand. And um, that is how Wes and Willow was born. And that was like the first kind of tactic, right. Of like, I'm going to make this just sound like it's a cool brand. And it, I, I did that. I worked on the branding. I, I instantly was like, we need a color palette. And so I, I started to search around for like how to find color palettes. And that's I, literally like I have the exact image of where I found the color palette from and the logo and, and all that. Like I just really focused on that because I was so confident in my own ability to be able to like learn the logistics of doing print on demand, which I had no idea. Right. But I was like, I, I'm pretty confident I can learn that. So let me just focus on what I love to do, which is like this branding and building a social channel and, and all of that. And I felt like the rest, I just kind of like, swing it right and then figure it out so that that was really my how i differentiated myself and i think is a different in terms of startup from, from competitors and how did you how did you launch this thing was there like a launch date or was it a slow like uh, uh, unveiling how did you do it so i launched it on october 17th i gave like five friends and family portraits and I said, I want you guys to film. Like I told my dad to film my mom. I told my friend's mom to film the dad. I told my best girlfriend to have her boyfriend film her. And I launched with five ads of them all doing a mostly faked um, reaction because I was like coaching them <laughs> through it. And Wait, hold, those... on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So w- were you like, I have this idea for a launch campaign and this is how it's going to go down and it's going to be Correct. anchored off this creative? It's going to be, well, I noticed that a lot, that there were a lot of reaction videos um, from competitors and just out there. And those are the top performing ads. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to do it for, you know, how do you start to do that without having any customers? They they were all customers. I was like, well, I'm just going to have my friends and family do it. And we're going to stage some of this stuff. And those five ads took me through like literally all through holiday until January. And that's when I had to like start to redo the ads. But that that was my launch campaign it's amazing it's amazing and because like you you didn't i, I love when st- you hear stories like that because it's not like you're like weston willow is here right the, the big unveiling it's like you you had the brand feeling already built into this campaign correct yeah yeah like we never had like a we we never had like a launch campaign i never communicated that we were new all i wanted to do from the very very beginning was communicate trust and because i think that as a consumer that is very very important and and honestly, I had dabbled in, in drop shipping. Like as I was coming up with Weston Willow, I was like, let me try a drop ship. And like, wow, is that like a, a, a fast lane course into understanding what not to do. And I'm really glad I did that, you know, made mistakes and, and just like understood 
how, how hard that is and challenging and um, kind of like allowed me to course correct and lesson a little bit. Anyway, yeah, the trust for me was like number one. I, I wanted customers to trust from the very beginning. And I was like, how do you communicate that on a website without like, you know, cheesy stuff like a trust badge or, um, you know, pop-ups or reviews happening. I didn't, I didn't want any of that. I wanted trust through design, through testimonial, through, um, you know, the way the, the website worked. That to me is how I was building trust. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, you go into an industry where there's a lot of, you know, it, it, it is a commodity. And so your brand is like creating that feeling. And, yeah. and it is all, I mean, now you have, I'm looking at your site right now. Now you have 3,232 reviews, but like, yeah, I think a lot of people will say, well, like, what am I supposed to do for a social proof if I don't have any customers yet? I think you have a good, you have two good examples, which is like you invested in the brand and the creative was like real people reacting to the product. Yeah. Because not sometimes reviews, reviews are not a, um, reviews are not a go-to for every single consumer. If you put your reviews right in front of your consumer or prospective customer, they'll consider it. But if you have a website that is built well, that looks professional, that can stand up against another brand, any other mainstream brand, right? Whether they have $20 million of seed funding or, or you know, you're putting $200 of your um, paycheck into it, as long as it looks legit, your customer is not going to question it. Right. So, and I, and I recently have seen some, some websites where there's just no reviews. They, they don't even put the reviews up. And I just don't think that it's, it should not be a barrier for somebody to start a business without reviews. Love it. I have some annoying tactical questions, but I think this is what people like to hear. Uh, on the actual ad creative, how did you do it? You just asked people to send you iPhone videos and then what? Correct. They sent me iPhone videos. I used promo.com to make those like videos that you see all over with the text rolling on the bottom. Is that, is that a site where you can get, you can also buy like B roll and stuff? You can, it didn't work. I try, I did it. You get some free, based on the plan you have, you get some free B roll that you can get. It just didn't work again. It just looks inauthentic people. Yeah. I think, I think <laughs> any, every, you know, there's a book, the lean startup when he talks about minimum viable product and you overthink your business before you launch it. And like, just like launch your, just launch your business, right? Like, what are you waiting for? Let the customers tell you if it's good enough. And I, I, I hadn't read it at that point, but I, I unknowingly was kind of like adopting that feeling of like, let's just, let, let's just see what happens. And so I just use those iPhone videos and put some text on them and it worked. And then like, were you running the ads yourself? Did you go to Facebook ads manager and upload the videos and write the ads and every, do everything yourself? painstakingly yes it was like it, it i would i was so caught up in reading about what i'm supposed to do i had like watched like i said i was up to four in the morning watching these videos i think i consumed over 100 hours of content and i wrote out a plan for myself of like okay this is what you do in 40 hours of launching on facebook and that you and you're supposed to launch an ad set after midnight so that it gets the full 24 hours to spend versus like if you launch it at 4 p.m it's going to force to spend like all this like honestly crap of like what i was supposed to do to the point where i was like i was waiting until 11 59 p.m to turn on the ad for the next day and like i was doing everything all day long and obsessing over it um you know fast forward to today like as of march i signed a, an agency to to do all my media for me and my creative and you know, I've learned so much from them and also like looking back on like how wrong I was doing it myself, but yeah, it was all me. But don't you think it's, it's important though, even though that process sucked, like, don't you think you're in a better, better position to manage the agency? Oh. Cause like I've, I've talked to a bunch of founders on this show and it's like, if you don't really know what you're doing, then all of a sudden you're signing a 50 K retainer to an agency. You probably know how to poke holes in that stuff because you're like, dude, I've been in ads manager until two in the morning. Yeah. Like, and I definitely do. And I, I think that they probably appreciate me for it. I hope, but yeah, totally. And, and, you know, it, it's different when you're running, like, like I said, I worked in advertising for a long time. I've run many ad accounts before, but it's a lot different when that $200 a day is yours versus someone else's. Right. And then as you scale yeah. up and you're spending thousands and tens of thousands of dollars a day, you know, it just, you're like, mm, gee, I better do this. Right. Um, and you care a lot more. So I was going to ask you about budget. Actually, was that the initial budget you set two hundred dollars a day? I think I was doing like two or three hundred dollars a day, 
and I, I think I, I, I don't know how high I scaled in 2019, like through holiday, maybe up to, maybe up to like two or $3,000 a day. And, and did you know, like, how, I guess, how did you set 200? Was that like a number you were comfortable with? And you're like, screw it. We're going to just going to see if this works. Cause I probably heard it on a YouTube video, honestly, <laughs> like I don't really have a, a, an educated answer beyond like that just seemed good. I told myself I was going to invest $1,500 in between like shipping people, like, you know, my friends and family, the portraits to start, uh, you know, and the ads. I was like, if I can't make it work within $1,500, bucks, i am like, okay, you learned a lesson and we'll try something else. So I think that's how I came up with it. Got it. So that's good. So you had, I mean, you, you said like my budget all in is 1500 Yeah. Yeah. I was like, do you know how much, I have to be how much confident you... enough to, to actually like make it work. And if you, and if didn't, you were willing to move on, which is important. Yeah. How, yeah. how much, how much did you return on that initial 1500? Do you remember? I was profitable day two, like making profit. <laughs> amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so what, so what, what did you have Shopify set up to like whole site yep. build out or just one page? Everything. What, what, and yep. how Everything long did was... that take like leading up? I'd say like, I, I, I spent two weeks, honestly, uh, two weeks working on the design of the, of the product. And, you know, that was me, that, that was me in Photoshop working with artists who are still with me to this day to who, you know, did like the, the vector images of the pets. And I was like, you know, what pets do I want to launch with on the site and have like, you know, be our cover girl and cover boy, you know, whatever. But, uh, and uh, spoiler, it's my dog, but the yeah so I, I spent a lot of time really thinking about what i wanted to offer and the background colors you know i thought through the product a lot and then the website and i made a point to not look at other print on demand pet brands as inspiration and to look at real brands you know not not real but you know like modern mainstream successful brands that's where i took my inspiration from i did not take inspiration from uh, these smaller brands, because my vision was to do this and be all in and be invested and be like, you know, it, 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 can I make this work as a long term business? So, so how I, do you I, it, go ahead? How do you how do you drive like so? So now that you now that you've launched and you've obviously it's been a wild year. It's only been a year. Holy cow! Um, it's been a wild year for your business. Like, how do you? how are you from a marketing perspective? Like what do you, what are the things in your toolkit for making sure that you sustain growth, right? Outside of the product stuff, obviously the product has to be great. You got to come up with good product ideas and, and all that stuff. But like from a daily weekly marketing rhythms, what's in the machine? Yeah. So it is extremely competitive and what a year to start, right? Like really, really strange. And luckily and fortunately for, for pet businesses, for home decor businesses, for e-commerce business, the pandemic has had positive impacts. So beyond my wildest dreams and we were not prepared for it, but that kind of threw a wrench into things. And, you know, it was like, surprise, it's Christmas in March, April, and May. Like we didn't, was not planning for that, but we change out our creative every single week. We write new creative. We produce new creative every single week. We tweak what's working and we create new versions of it, but we are literally churning out creative every single week because it is extremely competitive. It is what a lot of the competition is doing. And it's the only way to find out what's working and what's not working. We use, a, we are very fortunate to, to get, I mean, upwards of 20 or 30 pieces of UGC a day. So we are, we use that uh, in a lot of our campaigns. And in terms of like just marketing push, we try to do one big marketing push a month, one big sale. And that's when I'll send a campaign out in Clavio. Uh, and then one and flows the rest of the time. But yeah, that's, that's our marketing cadence in terms of like ads and, and communication. Amazing. That was a great little nugget. Cause there's two things I want to dive into. So number one, um, you said you're getting 20 to 30 uh, UGC pieces per day. Yeah. Uh, is there an automated campaign that's that, that th those are coming from? Like what, what, what drives that? Literally nothing, but people <laughs> posting photos. Amazing. It is insane. Also, we started to grow a thousand followers a day on Instagram from day one, like maybe not day one, but like maybe by like week one, 
that was like our average. And we, I mean, we've been in business less than a year. We have almost 160,000 Instagram followers. I mean, really just insane growth. And I think it's because number one, pets make people happy. Number two, this, the portrait phenomenon just makes you, makes people so happy. People gravitate towards it. It literally just makes people happy. And which is like an awesome thing to, to do and work on every day. But there's, there's a lot that's, that's one reason why the second reason why people have a surprising amount of pet Instagram accounts. So they want to post that portrait to their right. pet Instagram and tag Wes and Willow because we will, I mean, I'm not kidding. Like probably 90% of the tags we get in stories, I will repost. And we, a lot of them will repost the repost being like, we're famous. So I think that, and, and it's honestly, I mean, it's like free PR every single day because a lot of these accounts have, you know, a couple thousand followers. So they're, they're all micro influencers in themselves sure. that we're not paying, yeah, you, right? You would, and you would never be able to like target them the other way if you tried to do it intentionally. Right, right. So there's that. And then reviews, I mean, it depends on the day, but we can get like 15 to 30 reviews with pictures every single day also. So do people send you videos or like, how do you actually then grab the like UGC and then be able to use it as creative in an ad? Yeah. So we, if, if it's a story post with a video, we'll reach out, ask for the original asset and say, we want to use it in advertising. If it's UGC, we'll reach out, we'll say, we want to use it in advertising. What's the, what's the hit rate on that? Like every 10 people you email, how many people say yes and actually send that to you? That no one's ever said no. It's amazing. (laughs) You just got to ask. You just got to ask. I mean, people really like, like, can you tag us? I'm like, of course. So the, a really cool tactic that we started to do, and, and this is, I have, I'm not taking credit for it. This is my agency actually tweeted about it and I just stole it. So we have a, a flow set up 35 days after purchase because we're custom. It takes a couple weeks on average, depending on where you are in the world, three to four weeks before it's delivered. So 35 days just felt right. The subject line of the email is, do you want a $50 gift card? We want to give you a $50 gift card. You open it up. It's a nice, you know, gift card offer. And when they respond to it, we have uh, a gorgeous uh, trigger that responds immediately to that subject line of that email flow so that it just instantly comes back. It's plain text. It's from me. And it says, we, all you have to do to get the $50 gift card is to submit a video of either you unboxing if you have it or a video review of you talking about why you like the portrait, your pet and in the video and just make it an engaging video. They've just started sending, we've actually made money on the flow, uh, but we've gotten, I'd say like five videos back and videos are, you know, we, we, we receive much, much less, fewer videos than we do photos. So it, it's something that we want and it works so well on ads that that 50 bucks, even if we don't use it, it's so worth it just to get that, uh, get that content back. I love it. Um, and then when you talk about taking that, so you get 20, 30 pieces a day, you said you're refreshing creative every week. Is that like, is there a theme for that? You're just trying to make it better. Like what are you actually doing every single week? And, and, you know, other than the monotony of like, I got to change this out. Yeah. So it's actually managed fully by my agency, but we together will work on those concepts together. And it's, we try to be as seasonal as possible. I find that seasonality drives uh, purchase intent and drives urgency and makes it feel relevant. So, and also on the contrary, if you don't change out your ads and you say like winter sale or like winter special or something like that, when it's spring, you know, like you have to make sure that that's, it's still relevant, but that we try to find as many opportunities to talk about seasonality what's going on in the world as possible and then of course refreshing it with just new imagery new ugc new mock-ups that we have created new influencers that we work with so so do you just basically send the videos to the agency and then like you guys have some type of conversation yeah. about you know where you're going to cut up into new creative yeah that's right so i'll send them every week i send them what i think are the best new pieces of content they also know where to find it I'm, my team puts everything organized into google drive folders and, and they just know that that's like up for grabs it's all been approved and they can use it and then they'll just use that as their creative toolbox to create new ads every single week that's awesome that must feel like a superpower too from an agency perspective versus you know having to because my guess is you probably wouldn't be able to refresh creative every week if you were doing it on your own no way. And it'd be the worst use of my time, you know, because I, I, I really have zoomed out 
and, and taken a lot of mentorship from my agency and also just like other business owners that I've become into contact with along the way of like trying to, you can't have your head down and, and doing these tactical things while trying to build a real legitimate brand and, and create awesome customer experiences and, and expand, you know, the business. It's, you're just not going to do it if you're making ads all day long. Can, can you share the agency? Sure. It's common thread co. Oh, cool. Okay. Those guys are great. Yeah. They're awesome. I mean, it also helps that they post like a, they promote a ton of, I think it's clear from their content that they're the experts in that field. Right. And so yep. you, you probably feel good about, about doing that anyway. Yep. Um, just, you don't have to, you don't have to answer if you, if you're not comfortable with it, but like if they're a ballpark of like how much you pay them in a month, cause I think people would want to say, Holy shit, I would love to be able to have my creative managed too. Like, can I afford that? Yeah. I don't feel comfortable sharing it, but I do feel comfortable sharing that it is something that you would only do once you are established enough to feel confident that uh, it's not going to take away from your profitability. You know, you're, you're, I have a team of five on that agency, I think or four or five, you know, it's, it's, it's real money and, and it's, it's a real contract and it's a retainer and they're doing real work, you know? So it's, it's not cheap and it's definitely not something that you would start, you know, I, I never in a million years would have thought that I was honestly going to start paying somebody more than I got paid myself the year prior. Uh, <laughs> that is, if you told me that I would have been like, I don't think so. So it, it's, you know, it's an investment that needs to make sense for your business at that time. Yeah, that's a great answer. Cause it's, it's true. You, you shouldn't have, it wouldn't have been the best move if you did this first, you needed to learn no firsthand. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you've got to kind of be the Swiss army knife of marketing and branding and creative and, and running ads to, to start this type of business because this business is, is so, so cool. This business model, because you don't need to go to a venture capitalist and be like, I need $2 million to buy product and, and house it. And please trust me because this is my vision. You don't have to do that. You know, you just need to know how to do everything well enough to get you to where you need to be to hire people who know how to do it really, really well. Right. That's that, I think that's the, the key differentiator between this business model and any other business in the world. Awesome. All right. I've learned a bunch from this. So I want to transition. I want to, we're going to wrap up by asking you about the best campaign that you've ever ran. So Ben, tell me about the best campaign that you've ever ran. Uh, what's the best Weston Willow campaign? The best campaign I ever ran was my mom unboxing her portrait of their dog, Marley. She was really cute about it. And she took like two, I, 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 the, the portrait got to her and then it took her two days to actually film the video because she was like waiting for the right lighting and my dad filmed it and she had makeup on and it was all, you know, a whole production for her. Literally that ad made me the most money uh, out of any other campaign that I had ran in the early days. And it still runs to this day in different forms and clips of it, you know, like a two second reaction of her opening it and smiling, but, and she hates seeing it. She's like, why is that ad still running? I can't believe it's still running. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that ad has made me hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, because you're like, it's worth printing money, mom. We're not going to turn right. this ad off. Right. I'm like, just wait for Mother's Day, mom. Okay, you're going to be thanked. It's awesome. One of my favorite lines, Gary Vee has said that uh, creative, creative is the variable to success. And I, I love that because it's like, if you can invest in the creative, that's, it's not because you had some perfect product copy on your landing page and it was perfectly right. optimized for conversion. Like 90% right. of the reason people are even getting to that page in the first place is because of the creative. Right. Right. And if you, if you are able to have a successful or semi-successful business without doing all of that tweaking and obsessing over the look and feel and design of your website, I mean, isn't that enough of, of a, you know, ego boost for you to go out and do that tomorrow. Right. So just start it and, and see if, it, if there's any sort of uh, reaction it's worth, it's worth pursuing. Okay. One last question that I want to ask you um, just cause this comes up a lot in the show you, so you guys do a lot of discounts and, and sales and promos. Um, there's a mixed bag depending on the brand make, can you make the case for why you are an advocate of discounts for people that might be skeptical and how they help you grow? We are an impulse purchase and impulse purchases are 
you know, our, our bread and butter and impulse purchases happen faster when there's a sale that's ending tomorrow. So we have done a lot of testing with different assorted pop-ups uh, to, from email capture to get percentages off, you know, SMS. We, we've tested a lot. And what works are sales that are that drive urgency, that drive and, and drive impulse purchase because that's that's how we make our money. That's a good way. I actually wouldn't have, I, I wouldn't have guessed you were going to answer it that way. That's a good it's a good framework to think about it. Like what stage of like, how do people buy your product, right? If it's like a highly considered, you know, purchase first impulse, like it's clear that you know that and that's what your marketing and brand is oriented around. Yeah, majority, majority of our customers are impulse first time buyers. There are many who have to come to the site over the course of 25 days and be retargeted six or seven times before they, they give in, right? And we I even see on Instagram all the time, finally gave into this Instagram ad and they post the picture with their portrait. But it, you know, it, we, we bank on those impulse purchases because they're so happy. It's really easy to do. You upload a photo from your phone, from either Instagram or your camera or whatever it is. It's super mobile friendly and we want you to do it right in that moment. So, you know, what, discounts for many brands cheapen the brand and I agree with that. But I'm also not, uh, you know, naive about what Weston Will is. And we're, we're here to just make people happy. And we know that that impulse is part of that whole process. Awesome. And this is a good place to wrap it. This is a great, great one. I, I got a lot out of this at like, I got, I'm scribbling notes the whole time for this for later. So I appreciate you doing this. Um, if you want to go check out more about Ben and the brand, go to West and A and D willow.com. You can find everything there and then you'll be in the funnel. Like we're just trying to get you traffic. You're going to get people to the site. Then they're going to be retargeted forever. And then they're going to make the next impulse purchase for you. But I Ben, it. I appreciate it. Uh, and if you like this episode, make sure you leave us uh, a little review and say, Hey, Ben from Wes and Willow was awesome. Ben, I appreciate it. We'll see you later. Thanks, Dave. Thank <laughs> you.